signs. KRAS wild type, 62 years old, significant tumor burden in the liver and some lung disease. Symptomatic at first, responds nicely to Folfox Bev, maintenance only for about four months, starting to progress again with some symptoms. Okay, so feeling a little bit, you're up in your Oxycontin, um, scan looks a little worse. KRAS wild type was, the maintenance was CAPE and BEV, mm -hmm. all right, uh, but a nice initial response to OX but a little still neuropathy just to be, uh, take that off the table. Okay, so now what are you gonna do? You've yeah. got three choices for biologics. <laughs> um, which way are you going with this patient? I still I probably would do an EGF receptor in this situation when I want to have, when the focus is on tumor shrinkage, the data are just um, uh, probably more. What's the trigger there, the symptoms? Yeah, Okay. Yeah, and tumor burden. Um, I think, you know, I mean, the interesting thing with Aflipa said that there was some response signal, but I agree with Johanna, the side effect profile needs to be encountered uh, and, and being in, included in the decision making. But I, I think that uh, the EGF receptor inhibition has a track record for tumor shrinkage by itself as well as in combination. So you're not waiting for arenatecan refractory? You're going to bring arenatecan in right yes, here? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Fulfiri? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't, fulfiri. after... So the data are very clear that when you have full Fox failure, that the 5-FU in ibinotecan will not add anything. So I'm not married to it. Uh, now, if you continue with BAF, that's an issue because you may not get it approved for infusion. So I do sometimes fall theory in the mutant with, with the, the BAF because otherwise I don't get it approved. But when I do uh, the cetuximab combination, I do not give the 5-FU. Same patient, Axel but now not symptomatic. The disease is progressing, right? Gonna be symptomatic, um, and, um, but, but not currently symptomatic. KRAS wild type. Yeah, so I, I would uh, continue the, in a non-symptomatic patient where response is not an issue, and I agree with Heinz, you know, about the, there's probably the differential between EGF septic antibodies versus BEV. Uh, if you don't need a response, you have a known toxicity profile of bevacizumab patients, probably really don't, don't notice bevacizumab. I mean, that's the beauty. You can have a real placebo-controlled uh, comparison here. I use Fulfiri BEV, and I do believe that when you have BEV, you, you probably want the fluoroperimidin yes. around. Uh, uh, and I, I, I would then sequence, you know, Fulfiri BEV, and the next sequence would be Arenotec and Cetuximab, followed by uh, Regorafenib. Towards the end. Okay. Towards the end. Okay. I agree. Uh, Johanna, let's make the patient same age, same symptoms, but initially presents, uh, but is KRAS mutated, okay? Um, goes through Folfox Bev, uh, progresses relatively quickly, so within about three to four months, actually, you know, first scan, maybe just a little stable disease, um, and um, some fall in the marker, but symptoms are kind of coming up. Uh, now, um, what are you going to do in that patient? So relatively quickly progressing through frontline therapy. I mean, I think where you are right now with the KRAS mutant patient is full fury bev or full fury of flibercept. I think you can choose either one. Um, and I think that you're just going to have to hope for that response rate because we don't have that additional agent, the anti-EGFR, that's going to be able to boost that response rate. Yeah, would you call that a bev failure and that would be a rationale to switch or... The you know, patient's tolerating the BEV, but, you know, it's not working that well. That's the million-dollar question, and I don't think we know the answer to that. I think those are the patients where you might consider weighing the aflibercept in a little bit more, but I don't know that we've seen data that tells us no. that aflibercept will save a BEV failure patient. Okay. All right, Henning, so now we've got a patient that's been through it all. So, uh, but they've, let's say they're KRAS wild type. Um, they've had a nice frontline run with, I'll give you full theory BEV, all right? Optimaried or no, not. No randomized data. No. <laughs> we don't know the efficacy yet. I'm, I'm happy with it though, it's okay with me. So it's now a year later um, and they've had some progression um, and um, you, know, you chose to maybe switch to OX BEV now that you, you know, you've got some TML uh, data, um, but they're KRAS um, wild type and they progress again. And the question now is, you know, they're a little tired of chemotherapy and the like, and you've got a patient uh, who was progressing, you got EGFR drugs, you got regorafenib. How do you choose between those two? Uh, probably in, the, in, a, in a patient who is, who is KRAS wild type, I would, I would and, and if I'm sure that, you know, Folfury and Folfox are really not effective anymore, because sometimes you see, uh, again, 
responds to a drug that has been used before. So, I, for example, I have patients now treat for four to five years with porphyry plus something on and off. And this is, for me, still first-line treatment. Mm -hmm. you know, this is also shifting up the idea of what is second-line, you know, how, how we define that. But this is just a sidekick here. So, uh, you know, if, if I'm sure that this patient has no benefit from porphyry or forfox, this was actually your, your question, then I think in this case I would go for uh, an EGFR inhibitor, rather than a uh, regular uh, According, uh, According to the lines. I'm sort of with that, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think we agree on that. Okay, yeah. so we're having all these discussions about what's the best front line versus, versus second line. Are there any studies, Heinz, that are going to help us inform, you know, comparing the different yeah. biologics, comparing different chemo regimens? Yeah, I think we will have. At, hopefully at ASCO we will see some of them. We have the German trial, which actually for the first time test the side-by-side head-to-head comparison between the EGF receptor inhibitors and the um, VHGF inhibitor, the bethesuzumab, where the backbone is full theory. So I think this will be very important data. We have the US intergroup, the CLGP SWOG uh, 8045, where actually it was the less choice, but with the history in the US, you choosing mostly Folfox, I think about between 80 and 90 percent had Folfox um, uh, backbones. And here we see again the comparison between Cetuximab and Bethesuzumab. So this head-to-head -head comparison, I think, will hopefully help us. I'm not sure if the study design was so that how clear the answers will be from the data, but I think there will be the new basis and background to make treatment decisions. Because I think the biggest challenge for us should be continue with BEF first and second, where is the use for each F receptor and wild type. And I think we all want the best for our patients and figure out what the most effective treatment is. As you mentioned, we do not have a biomarker for BEF, so that is also not helpful in this situation. Even now we have prospective trials going on with VHGFA. So all putting together, and that will be tested in 8.04.05, we will get some answers hopefully in the next 6 to 12 months.